What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel, and the legacy support continues with Marincess for Battles of Chaos. I know a lot of people are excited about it because that's been a deck that's been really popular, but has never really been able to get off the ground. There's new cards announced, and they look to be pretty good, so we're going to jump into those, but before we do, I have a couple of Dogmatica cards that were also a reel for the same set that just, again, don't really warrant their own video, so we're going to cover those quick, and then we'll jump into the meat and potatoes of the segment with the Marincess cards, but I will ask guys if you do enjoy the content you please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos click the bell icon if you want to stay notified specifically for when we do live streams and giveaways and stuff but if you don't i get it i people preach about the bell icon and it can be kind of annoying so no harm no foul there let's jump into the video Alright, so just taking a look at the new cards that are for Dogmatica, we've got two cards, White Exalted of Dogmatica and Dogmatic Cabre. I really, really like both of them. I think they're both awesome uh, art-wise, but I don't think they're both good playability-wise. So White Exalted of Dogmatica, level 4 Spellcaster Ritual. You can Ritual Summon this card with Dogmatic Cabre. If this card is Ritual Summoned, you can target up to two face-up monsters on the field. One of those monsters gains attack equal to the other monsters. Your level later higher Dogmatica monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. I guess that's fine. Your Fleur de Lis and other ones are safe. If a monster or monsters is special summoned from your opponent's extra deck, you can look at your opponent's extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard. You can only use the effect of White Exalted of Dogmatica once per turn. So, it's definitely better than White Knight of Dogmatica, and the fact that it does give protection as well as being able to look at the extra deck and get rid of things the opponent might need is neat, but it's not like it's impossible to get over, and I would say more often than not it's going to be more trouble than it's worth, unless the ritual spell is better than I think it is. Dogmata Cabre, or however you're pronouncing that, I'm probably botching that name, so I'm sorry in advance. Uh, this card can be used to ritual summon any Dogmatic or Ritual monster from your hand or graveyard. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field, and or banish fusion or synchro monsters from your grave, whose total levels equal or exceed the level of that Ritual monster. Then, if both White Knight of Dogmatica and White Exalted of Dogmatica are on the field, you can look at either extra deck and send one monster from it to the graveyard. So, this is definitely better than the first Ritual spell. I think it was Dogmaticism that came out, uh, specifically because it lists both of them in it, so it is a pre-prep target, meaning you can actually play this... Uh, in the deck, search them, and have a little bit more consistency getting to your ritual pieces. Being able to banish from grave to summon does make the cost a little bit less steep, so I guess it is a decent card overall. And being able to send from either extra deck is not terrible either. I think it's definitely neat. It's got some really cool artwork, and people will probably like it. It might be able to test something out, given the things that it has going for it, being a level 4, uh, being something that you can send Herald of the Arclight with Nadir's Servant and go into combos. I don't know, I don't want to write it off necessarily, but I don't exactly feel like some kind of extreme level of excitement for the cards as it relates to the Dogmatica engine, but I'd be happy to be wrong, so maybe you guys think it's a little bit better. Okay, moving on to the Marincess stuff now, which is what people are really looking for. Um, Marincess Aqua Argonaut, level... Four, uh, Link 4, sorry, 2 plus water monsters. Your opponent's monsters cannot attack other monsters while this card is in the extra monster zone. You can only use each of the following effects of this card once per turn. You can target one water monster you control and one card your opponent controls. Return them to the hand. When a spell or trap or effect is activated on the field during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can special summon one of your other Marincess cards equipped to this card, and if you do, negate that activated effect. So it is a hard once per turn. Target a water you control in any opponent's card, bounce them. Not bad, I guess you can use that to like somehow combo with some of your waters and get recursion effects if things activate on normal or special summon, which I'm sure some of the Marincess cards do. And spell or trap negation is decent enough, it's not impossibly hard to, to get that to go. Uh, your opponent's monsters cannot attack other monsters while it's card in the extra monster zone. So it's decent enough, and if it has protection or if you play with some of the other traps to keep it safe, your other monsters are safe. It's not bad. I don't know that it's like the best new card that they got, but it's neat, and it's a decent addition to the deck for sure. All right, Marincess Spring Girl. This one I've read. So you can banish one Marincess monster from your graveyard, special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard as material for a water link monster, you can send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard equal to the number of Marincess monsters you control, then inflict 200 damage to your opponent for each card sent this way. 
So this is really good. It's an extender. It's a level four, meaning it does open up for things like Bahamut Shark and Toad. Of course, really good combo pieces to have in any water deck if you can make them. Plus, being able to mill stuff does set up the fact that most of your Marincess monsters have effects that activate by banishing themselves from Grave. So it's not really a detriment even if milling was intended to be. Uh, and the extra burn damage could, in theory, help as it comes to, like, going to time or whatever. So there's definitely things to like about it. But in general, being another extender that's easy to summon and doesn't really eat up too many of your resources is really, really solid for the deck. Marincess Sleepy made in cool artwork on that. Level 5 water. You can target one Marincess card you control. Special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, that target gains this effect. The targeted card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effect. So first of all, that's really good because... You can use that to target Argonaut, special this, and then Argonaut has built-in protection from card effects, and you can only attack Argonaut if it's in the extra monster zone, so it does give you a little bit of a sort of piece to build around in terms of keeping your other monsters safe and, and being able to have a response to your opponent's cards. You can banish this card from your grave, then target one Marincess Link monster you control, equip one Marincess Link monster from your graveyard to it. So a lot of them do rely on the equipping. This isn't the worst mechanic to utilize, especially with things like Spring Girl being able to mill stuff. It's neat, it's a free extender, and it actually does a lot in terms of not just being an extender, but also giving protection to the card that comes out. Overall, I'd say this is a really, really solid piece of support. Now, Marincess Circulation. Target one Water Link monster you control, return it to the extra deck, and if you do, special summon one Marincess Link monster from your extra deck with the same rating, but a different name. For the rest of this turn, it cannot attack directly. Also, it cannot be destroyed by battle. This is treated as a Link Summon. If you control a Link 3 or higher Marincess monster, you can activate this card from your hand. So most of their traps have that same effect that says, if you control a Link 3 or higher, you can play it from the hand. So it's really neat because you can basically use this to tag out an Xyz mo uh, Link monster you have out, put out a different Marincess monster and then go off depending on what you need whether it's you know coral anemone or marbled rock or some of the other uh link monsters you do have a decent pool of cards available to you i don't know how good it would be as like a three of or anything like that but it's definitely a nice toolbox card to have access to and then Marin says Bubble Ring, uh, Crystal Heart Inspiration here. When this, when a monster declares an attack, negate the attack, and if you do, special summon one Marin says Crystal Heart from your extra deck or graveyard. You can banish this card from your grave, then target one Link to or higher Marin says Link monster you control. This turn, it can attack a number of times each battle phase up to its Link rating, but your opponent takes no battle damage from battles involving it. So basically, any of your Marin says monsters over Link 2 can attack all of your opponent's monsters up to its Link rating. So if it's a Link 3, it gets 3 attacks, so on and so forth. Um, the battle damage protection is obviously to prevent, you know, OTKs that would stem as a result, but it's kind of neat. It, I don't necessarily love the fact that it, you know, attack negation or cards that rely on attacks typically are very outclassed in today's metagame. The game is just, you know, sped up to the point where they're not super useful, but there might be some, you know, niche uses for this, and people who know Marincess better than I do might be far more qualified to speak on it than I am. So overall, it is really cool to see that there is new support for the deck. I don't know that it's going to be enough to vault it into a top tier, but there are people who would argue it's already been a bit of a rogue deck, and there's definitely a couple of really good main deck monsters that help the deck a ton. I don't think I'm super impressed by the new Link or the Traps, but it's not to say they're bad. I just have to see them in action before I can really comment on their usefulness. Uh, overall, though... Not bad. Battle of Chaos really stepping up with a lot of new support. Uh, we also got the announcement of the Dark Link 2 Charmer, so it should be the last uh, the last one of those. And obviously, it's just pretty much unconfirmed effect at this point, but it's safe to assume it's going to do the same thing that the other Charmers do. All right, I missed a card. In most circumstances, I would probably just like make a comment and be like, hey, I missed this. This is what it does. However, Marincess Dive is actually really good and might be the best card that was revealed out of all of them, so I wanted to at least give it the time of day to cover it here. It's essentially an inarch type monster reborn that also has the option to tutor a monster from the deck if you're playing the field spell now whether or not you're gonna play the field spell is a totally different conversation i don't know the deck well enough to know that that battle ocean is actually worth playing however as a one of to maybe be able to you know get an e-tally like effect from the deck you might consider it. Overall, though, this is a searchable in archetype monster reborn that helps with extension and sort of laddering up combos, and as a result, I think it's really, really useful. I don't know that Marincess is going to be anything more than rogue, per se, even with this new support. However, I've been wrong before and likely will be wrong again, and certainly people who know the deck are going to have their opinions on it one way or another. Let me know what you guys think. If you did enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time, right here at Love Shack.